flying high. Airliners carry passengers over turbulent air into a very hostile, cold environment. Without the airplane's ability to keep its interior habitable, long-distance flight and airport reunions would be impractical. For a century, the pioneering research of the United States Air Force has made high-altitude air travel safe and comfortable. As mountain climbers can attest, exposure to high altitudes can lead to headaches, fluid in the lungs, swelling of the brain, and lack of adequate oxygen. Cruising altitudes above 25,000 feet allow aircraft to fly above turbulence and enable engines to perform more efficiently as airframes move through the atmosphere with much less resistance than found in lower altitudes. From the founding of McCook Field in Dayton, Ohio, AFRL's predecessors began experimenting with high-altitude flight gear. This effort centered on fighting and preventing the effects of hypothermia and oxygen deprivation. In 1921, Researchers at McCook fielded the first enclosed pressurized cabin. This modified DH-9 allowed Lieutenant John McCready to pilot his aircraft to an altitude of over 37,000 feet. Air Force experiments also continued at the airfield in Hazelhurst, Long Island, where ground-based altitude chambers were constructed. The work conducted in these chambers became one of the foundations of the Air Force's aeromedical research. In the early 1930s, Pilot Wiley Post saw the need for a suit that allowed a pilot to perform in a pressurized environment in a non-pressurized airplane. Working with the Air Force labs, Post developed the first practical pressure suit for high-altitude flying. The United States Army Air Corps needed a high-altitude research test bed. Lockheed delivered the XC-35 as the first practical aircraft with a pressurized cabin. Pressurized cabins did not appear in U.S. bombers at the start of World War II. Crews flew at very high altitudes, relying on oxygen masks and thermal clothing. They were tethered by oxygen hoses to freezing cabins that could reach temperatures of 50 degrees below zero. The Aeromedical Laboratory at Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio, flew a specially equipped B-17 called the Nemesis of Aeroembolism as a test platform for developing oxygen delivery systems and insulated flight suits. Air Force altitude research at Wright Field led to the development of the first operational bomber with a pressurized cabin. The B-29 crew could work in a short sleeve environment without the need for oxygen masks. The same basic pressurization system used in the B-29 is still used in today's modern airliner. Compressed air is taken from the engine compressors and sent through air conditioners circulated through the cabin, and then sent to an outflow valve and released to the atmosphere. Without the groundbreaking work of the Air Force Research Laboratory and its predecessors, the evolution of modern flight from the earliest X-planes to the space shuttle would have been stranded at low altitude. From the smallest business jet to airplanes flying at the edge of space, the Air Force Research Laboratory's research and development of pressurized cabins and suits have made modern flight accessible, comfortable, and safe. <laughs>